Millions of people regard the Kaaba as the holiest place in Muhammadan Islam. What in reality is the Kaaba? In Arabic, it means a cube, stele, bet el. The historical records show no evidence whatsoever that it was at any time but a house of idolatry and was never associated with monotheism until the advent of Muhammad. It was a primitively structured shrine built by the pagan Arabs as a simple cube-like structure, without a roof, which sheltered a 12-inch diameter meteorite in the eastern corner of its wall. According to Ibn Ishaq, page 84, it was made of loose stones above a man's height, and they wanted to raise it and roof it because men had stolen part of the treasure of the Kaaba, which used to be in a well in the middle of it. This stone can be kissed during the preambulation, the circulation of the faithful around the Kaaba. It was one of pagan Arabia's holiest shrines with 360 idols around it and an object of pilgrimage. Being a site of pilgrimage, brought to Mecca trade and wealth in the same way that all such sites of pilgrimage do, and as it continues to do so up to this time in Saudi Arabia. It is an astounding fact that in the Quran, the name of Mecca is never mentioned, while in the Bible, the name of Jerusalem is mentioned 667 times. It is also a fact that little is known about the history of the Kaaba, apart from the myths and the totally unsubstantiated Muhammadan traditions, which are full of contradictions that maintain the following. That the Kaaba was originally built by Adam to a celestial prototype. This story is neither found in the Quran nor in the Bible. That after the deluge, it was allegedly rebuilt by Abraham and Ishmael as a place of worship. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. And remember Abraham and Ismail raised the foundations of the house. The Quran, the presumed word of Allah, contradicts all the ahadith stories by denying Adam any involvement whatsoever with the Kaaba, as it asserts that only Abraham and Ishmael were the builders of its foundation as the first house of worship dedicated to the one and only Allah. While engaged in rebuilding, Ishmael received the black stone from the angel Gabriel. This, of course, makes absolutely no sense, since Ishmael would have needed to build the foundations of the Kaaba to protect something special, the black stone, for example, and certainly not if it were empty. Why else did he need to build foundations to a flimsy structure not worthy of any god? The black stone had to be there in the first place as a fetish and object of veneration. Since Abraham and Ishmael were monotheists, and Abraham already, according to the Muhammadan traditions, destroyed the idols of his father, why would he and Ishmael build a shrine for another idol such as a meteorite? If the Arab tradition already knew of Abraham, why then did they lapse into idolatry for at least 25 centuries that followed, while the Israelites and the Jews carried forth the torch of monotheism that inspired Muhammad to create his Quran? How was it possible that not a single pagan Arab was called Ibrahim or Ismail, if they actually were the fathers of the Arabs? In contrast, after Muhammad, his name is carried by an enormous number of his followers. If the traditions are true, why then do repeated Quranic verses insist, in clear terms, that they, the Arabs, were actually totally ignorant of previous revelations, such as in chapters 2, 151, 11, 49, 12, 3, 16, 43, etc. It is imperative that we make clear even the obvious, that the alleged Arabian traditions contradict everything written in the Bible regarding Abraham and Ishmael. Since according to the Bible, neither Abraham nor Ishmael knew a God called Allah. They never traveled south to Arabia. They never knew any place called Mecca or structure called Kaaba. They never built the foundations of any structure. They never heard of or knew any messenger called Gabriel. Every single item in both the Quran and the Hadiths regarding Abraham and Ishmael are lies and deceptions. Centuries before Muhammad, most of the rituals of Muhammad and Islam were already practiced by the pagan Arabs, 
such as pilgrimage, circumambulating the Kaaba, calling the names of their idols, kissing the black stone, prostrating, running between the two hills, Safa and Marwa, venerating Zamzam, fasting, wearing white clothing, etc., etc., etc. In reality, Muhammad simply incorporated all the pagan rituals, traditions, and fetishes of the pagan Arabs and Islamized them to give his cult legitimacy, a sense of identity, and an image of uniqueness, so that he made it easier and less stressful for his brother Arabs to move from idolatry and paganism to his brand of monotheism by continuing the practices of their pagan fathers. In short, all Muhammad did was merely to obliterate the pagan representations of the idols without abolishing the pagan practices. Muhammad's quarrel with his Quraysh tribe was not because they did not believe in Allah, which they obviously did, but because they associated other gods and goddesses with him. The same Muhammad, who went into paroxysms of rage and disgust that filled the Quran at the idol worshipping of his tribe, the Quraysh, did not hesitate for one moment to incorporate every facet of their traditions and fetishes into his new cult without shame or remorse. During the whole period of 23 years that he used to fulminate and attack his idol-worshipping Quraysh tribe, Muhammad prayed in the Kaaba with them while it was full of pagan gods and goddesses. His hypocrisy knew no bounds. To gain favor with the pagan Arab tribes, he actually joined them wholeheartedly, but for the single and very simple amendment to the whole of their religion. That was to believe in one Allah instead of Allah and 360 other idols. It is extremely relevant to relate the story that Umar ibn al-Khattab reluctantly but very intelligently remarked about the kissing of the black stone. In Bukhari Hadith 2.667, he remarked, I know that you are only a stone that neither helps nor hurts. And if the Messenger of Allah had not kissed you, I would not have kissed you. Then he kissed it. It is very revealing that although Umar knew that the gesture was empty and false, he nonetheless copied Muhammad in kissing the stone. Just like Umar, billions of Muhammadans had followed and continue to follow their spiritual leaders in this shameful practice of venerating what was and continues to be a pagan ritual. Hence, every Muhammadan who makes the Hajj, who runs, who runs between the hills, who kisses the black stone, etc., is performing pagan rituals founded on pagan superstitions and sanctions by Muhammad himself. What is important to point out is that most of the same Muhammadans who incessantly assail and assault the paganism of the Christians do not even know that the entirety of their traditions and fetishes are based upon the paganism of the ancestors of the Arabs. It is always a pity and with great frustration that we cannot mention all the verses in the Quran and Hadith regarding any of the subjects that we are exploring with you for lack of time. It is up to you, the listeners, who are inquisitive and want to know more to read the relevant books or visit the definition section in our website.